Welcome to another video from explainingcomputers.com. Just over a year ago, I built a NAS, a network attached storage device using a Raspberry Pi 4 and the free software Open Media Vault. Since that time, Open Media Vault has been updated to the next version and the means of installing it on a Raspberry Pi has changed significantly. And so, in response to a lot of requests, I thought I'd make this updated video. Right, in this project I'm going to be using this Raspberry Pi 4 2GB model, although you could use any Raspberry Pi 4 or indeed any Raspberry Pi 3, Model A or Model B. This said, a Raspberry Pi 4 will give better performance due to its 1 gigabit Ethernet and USB 3 ports. For Open Media Vault, we also need at least two drives, one to install the software on and one or more on which to store data. Here, Open Media Vault will be installed on this SanDisk High Endurance microSD card, which happens to be 32GB, although an 8GB or 16GB card would be fine. Our data drive will then be this 1TB Samsung Cuvo, which I happen to have available, although any SSD or hard drive would be fine. This said, if you use a 3.5 inch drive, it'll need to have its own power supply as you won't be able to power it from the Pi. And also note, you could use a USB thumb drive as the data drive for Open Media Vault. We'll also need a power supply for the Pi, or it won't work fairly obviously, I'll be using a standard Raspberry Pi 4 power supply. And to connect the SSD to the Pi, I'll be using this USB 3 to SATA adapter. Finally, to hold everything together, I'm going to use one of these, a TerraPi kit with a, with a fan, which I've shown you on my channel in the previous video, along with the, the new conversion kit, which allows us to mount the SSD horizontally. And so, if we use the magic of filmmaking to put everything together, all of our hardware is complete, and we can move on to the software side of this endeavor. Right. Here we are on the website for Open Media Vault, and in the past installing Open Media Vault on a Raspberry Pi involved downloading an image and writing it to a microSD card. However, direct install images of Open Media Vault are no longer available for single board computers, and instead we need to follow the instructions which are available from this page. And if we click on the ones here for the Raspberry Pi, you'll find that what's documented here is very extensive indeed. It is of very good instructions, but they might be a bit daunting for some users. And so what I'm going to run through here are the most basic steps required to get Open Media Vault up and running on a Raspberry Pi, and which involve installing the light edition of Raspberry Pi OS on a micro SD card, booting it up, executing some setup commands, and running an install script. The method I'm about to show you is simpler than following the official instructions here on these pages, but note that it does require a monitor and keyboard to be connected to the Pi during the setup process, as well as typing out a few fairly extensive commands. So, let's get started, and the first thing we need to do is to download the light edition of Raspberry Pi OS, which we can do from a, this page on the Raspberry Pi website. And if we go down here, you'll find the Lite edition. There we are, there's Raspberry Pi OS Lite, which just means the addition of Raspberry Pi OS without a desktop. And so if I click on download here, you'll see that actually I've downloaded it already, so I won't download it again. And what we now need to do is to write that image to a micro SD card. And you can do this in various ways, but I'm going to use the software Belena Etcher, which you can download for free from this website. And indeed, I've got Etcher installed on this computer. If we just run it up here in the Windows, it'll come up and we can select our image. There it is, one we just uh, downloaded or could have downloaded. It's already picked up our micro SD card, which is plugged into the computer I'm using here, and we can click on Flash. Windows may give you a warning like this. It may not. It depends how your system is set up. If it does, just say yes. And Belena Etcher will get on with the flashing and verification process. And there we are, it's finished. We must make sure we cancel on this message that Windows will bring up. And we now have a micro SD card to boot up on our Raspberry Pi. Right, I've now inserted the micro SD card into the Pi, which is connected to power and ethernet. 
as well as to a monitor and keyboard which we need for the initial setup process, although after the setup process the Pi can run headlessly. So if we turn on the power, the Pi will start up, do a first run configuration of Raspberry Pi OS and eventually arrive at a command line login prompt where we need to enter the default username, which is pi, and the default password, which is raspberry. Now, at this point, we can proceed with the setup. But just before I do that, I'm going to increase the console text size so we can see things more clearly on video. So you don't have to do this bit unless you want to have larger text on your screen. But for me, I'm going to enter this command which as you may guess will reconfigure the console setup. And we need to select here the default of UTF-8 and then the default again of get optimal character set. And then we want to select the font terminus, which is the only font here which will offer a larger size. And then finally, we want to select 1632. And uh, there we are, as you can see, we've now got a larger font in our console. So, now we're back on the process of setting up Open Media Vault, and the first thing we need to do is to make sure Raspberry Pi OS is fully updated. So we're going to enter a sudo apt and a update like that, and what that will do is to update the Pi's repositories or online software sources, and then when that is run, we need to run a sudo apt upgrade and a minus y. And this will update Raspberry Pi OS and the minus Y flag we entered means that the Pi will automatically answer yes to any queries which come up during the update process. Next, we need to make sure that the Pi's network settings are all okay for Open Media Vault by entering this command. And like all the commands I'm entering here, I'll include these in the video description. This is the first of two commands that requires a little bit of typing. You're going to make sure you get this absolutely correct. Make sure the space is in the right places, all of that. But if that's okay, we can press enter. And finally here, we need to do a sudo and a reboot to make sure all of this has been implemented. Now, with the Pi having rebooted, we can log in again using the username pi and raspberry if you remember those there we are and we're now at a point where we could enter the command to install open media vault and the command is this one a very long command we've got to type in very carefully which will basically obtain and execute a script to do the open media vault installation so if we work through this carefully we start with a wget like that and a space minus sign there and then it's now a capital o that is not a zero not a small o it's a capital o and then a space and a hyphen, and then another space, then an HTTPS, colon forward slash forward slash, in the normal kind of way. We then got a github.com, like that. Now we then got an open media vault, and a plugin, and a developers, like that. We then got the forward slash, we then got an install script, Another forward slash a raw, forward slash a master, forward slash install, and then a space. We then want a vertical line, which you might have to search for on your keyboard. I've got it there. Another space, a sudo, a space, and then a bash. And if we got all of that right, we can press enter. There we are, and things are now happening, and will take up to about 30 minutes to complete. So what you might now want to do is to have a cup of tea or another preferred beverage, or maybe you'll want to wander to the park and talk to some ducks. You can always learn lots of exciting things talking to some ducks. But however you spend a few minutes, when you get back again, the Pi should have finished installing Open Media Vault, it should have rebooted, launched Open Media Vault, and be displaying a local IP address to access it over the network. And here, as you can see, the local IP address is 192.168.1.5. So if we go to another computer on the network and go to a web browser and enter that address and cross our fingers, yes, we've arrived at the web interface for Open Media Vault, where we can log in using the default username, which is admin, and the default password, which is Open Media Vault, like that. And hopefully we will now be in and we'll be working. Yes, we've accessed Open Media Vault over the network. 
And it's worth now pointing out that all of the setup we need to do on the Pi itself is complete. We can do everything else via the web interface. So the monitor and keyboard can now be disconnected from the Pi. Greetings. Here we are still in the Open Media Vault web interface, where a couple of things I should point out to you straight away are firstly that under General Settings, there is an option here to change the web administrator password, which you might want to do away from Open Media Vault. And the second thing to make you aware of straight away is over here on the top right, there is a menu which includes options for logging out and also for shutting down the Pi. So you might want to shut down the Pi and maybe disconnect its monitor and keyboard, set it up somewhere else, reboot it. That you can do once you've shut it down safely using the shutdown option here. It's also worth noting that the IP address for the Pi, the local IP address currently for us here, 192.168.15, that might be different on a reboot. And so if it is, you'll have to plug a monitor in again to find it out. Or you could look in your router control panel settings to find out what IP address has been allocated locally or you could use a free program such as Angry IP Scanner to find out its new local IP address. And I say more about this in my previous Raspberry Pi Open Media Vault video. Anyway, for now let's uh, ignore such matters and we'll press 11 to give us some more space to work on on the screen. And here in Open Media Vault there are loads and loads of settings as you can probably see, it's a very sophisticated piece of software. Lots of things you can learn about networking and implement using all of the functionality here. But uh, what I'm going to do for the rest of this video is just to do a very simple example to show you how to set up a shared folder that can be used by anybody who's accessing the local area network. And so to do that, first of all, we're going to go down to storage. And under storage, as you can see, there's an option for disks. And if we click on that, we will see hopefully two disks on this system. One is the microSD card on which we're running Open Media Vault, and the other is a Samsung QVO SSD connected by USB to the Raspberry Pi. And if we go down here to file systems, we can see what drives are mounted on the system, what is available to us. And here only two partitions are mounted, both on the microSD card. Now, this is because the other drive, the SSD connected to the Pi, is a brand new drive. It's never had a file system put on it. It's never been formatted. So here what I need to do is to click on Create, and we can select a device, which is going to be the Samsung drive. There it is. We'll give it a label. I'll just call it a QVO. That'll be fine. And for file system, we'll use the default here, which is X4, which is a Linux file system and will be the fastest one to use in terms of performance. So we'll click on OK. Do we want to format the device? Yes, we do. And there we are, it's finished. We can close that down and we can now see the Cubo SSD down here. However, it's not yet mounted. We still have to go in and mount the drive. As you can see, it says a mounted uh, no, I'm just messing around there, dearie me, put it at the top, leaping around the screen. But uh, anyway, once I stop messing around with the system, we need to mount that drive by going up to clearly click on the mount. And we'll now get a request to a confirm changes. We'll see a lot of these in Open Media Vault. It's important to click apply to apply our changes. Do we want to do it? Yes. And in a second, we can now see all of these volumes are mounted on our system. And just to be clear what's going on here, if you connected a storage device to your Pi, which already had a file system on it, which was already formatted, you don't have to do the create file system process. You could just as directly mounted the device as I've done here. Anyway, with the device now mounted, we can go down here to access rights management. There we are. And here there's various options available, including creating users and groups. And we could create all sorts of users, give them different access rights to different folders, things like that. But all I'm going to do here is go directly to a shared folders, which I'll select over there. And of course we have none at the moment. So I'll click on add. And uh, we're going to give it a name. We'll call it, for example, a Pi Share, I think. We'll select a device, which will be our QVO drive. And we're going to set permissions here to be right at the bottom here. If I just click to make things a bit smaller because it doesn't appear on the screen, we need to select everyone read write. There we are, and we'll uh, save that. Back to a, uh, there we were. And again, we'll do a uh, apply changes. Do we want to apply the configuration changes? Yes, we do. And then finally, what we want to do here is go down to services and we're going to select a sharing service, which is a SMB CIFS, which stands for Server Message Block Protocol Common Internet File System. 
which is a common means of sharing files over a network using a Windows computer, as the Windows icon over here probably suggests. And the first thing we need to do here is to click on Enable to enable this service, and then we need to click on Save. And then once again, we need to apply our changes. You're seeing a pattern going on here. And then we now need to go to Shares and Add to add a share. We're going to have a shared folder is going to be the one we've got already. Let's go down to that and select a Pi Share. Obviously, that's one we've just set up. And then under Public, we're going to set it to uh, Only Guests, which allows everyone on the network to access this without entering a username or a password. And so there we are. Everything we need is now set up. Again, lots of things we could set if we wish to, but I'm just going to press Save. And again, it's going to ask us to confirm our changes. And of course, we will do the same. Do we want to? Yes, we do. And in theory, we've now set up a shared Open Media Vault folder, which we can access from any PC on the local area network. And to test that, we'll uh, F11 and uh, minimize our browser. And we'll connect to the share here in Windows. And the first thing I'm going to do is just go to the menu here and go into Settings. And we're going to go to Network and Internet. You probably have guessed that. We're going to uh, scroll down a bit and go to Network and Sharing Center. We're going to go to uh, Change Advanced Sharing Settings over there. And we're going to check that Network Discovery is turned on, which it is. If it isn't turned on, make sure you turn on Network Discovery and save that. But uh, here that's all OK. But I just thought I'd show you what needs to be set up. Let's get rid of this as well. And then we'll now go to uh, this PC and then across to Computer and uh, Map Network Drive. And uh, you'll see it's already picked up Z to be the drive we're going to map to. We could pick any drive we wanted, but uh, normally you start at the opposite end of the alphabet for network drives. And we'll browse here. And there we are. We found Raspberry Pi and Pi Share. So we'll select that and uh, OK and finish. And yes, as you can see, we now have access to uh, Pi Share mapped as drive Z on this system, which we can use like any other Windows drive. As we've seen in this video, setting up a simple NAS using a Raspberry Pi 4 and Open Media Vault is a fairly straightforward process. More than that, it's also a great educational exercise if you want to become more familiar with network file sharing. But now that's it for another video. If you've enjoyed what you've seen here, please press that like button. If you haven't subscribed, please subscribe. And I hope to talk to you again very soon. Oh,